That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. For any of you that uh, really know me, you know that when there's something talked about about the Bible and it's incredibly stupid, I got to jump to that no matter what else is going on in the news. And that is a case of what has happened today. Because Sean King, one of the most famous white, white guys <laughs> in the country, because if you, if you know Sean King, you know he pretends to be black even though he's very clearly white. Both of his parents are white. You can actually see pictures of him as a kid with red hair. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Sean King, who pretends to be a black guy but isn't, uh, he's apparently also pretending to be something that he's not on top of pretending to be a black person when he's not. He's also pretending to be a theologian when he's not, trying to give some explanation about Jesus. I will say I welcome Sean King uh, into the theological realm because now being a theologian like myself, he may be the only one that's as white as I am. But anyway, I digress. Uh, he, he jumps into this realm very clearly having very little, if any, knowledge about the actual biblical narrative, and that shows off in the tweets where he's arguing that we should just be getting rid of all the statues. So when we were talking about this back in 2015 and having this discussion and saying, okay, where does it end? Where does this whole thing stop? Are we going to be tearing down statues of George Washington and uh, Thomas Jefferson, and they said, no, that's crazy, that's ridiculous, it's not going to go to that extreme, and of course it did. And we also said things, well, are you going to be coming after people that were even just good white people that, that were trying to, uh, I mean, actually, Jefferson and Thomas also tried to end slavery as well, but they ignore that little tidbit. Uh, what about people that actually ended slavery, like Abraham Lincoln. No, that's insane. We would never want to take down statues of, of Abraham Lincoln. Well, now, we didn't even think about this one, guys. I think the conservatives really dropped the ball here because we never even contemplated they would be saying, hey, let's rip down all the statues of Jesus. I mean, this really shouldn't surprise us. A bunch of communist Marxists, they, they tend to be pretty anti antithetical to the church, if you know anything about the history of, example, the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, they always wind up doing this eventually. But the point is, at least right here, that they've decided, yeah, we, we just need to tear down the statues of Jesus. And Sean King sort of articulating this point in these tweets. So, so here's famous white guy Sean King. And in this tweet, he says, yes, I think the statues of white European, uh, they claim is Jesus, should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? All caps. Egypt! Not Denmark. Tear them down. <laughs> so that's, that's Sean King's take on whether or not they should be tearing down statues of Jesus. Granted, I've probably seen far less paintings and stained glass windows and statues of Jesus than the average Christian, especially less than like, for example, Catholics or Lutherans that have a, an awful lot of that stuff in their churches. But nonetheless, I have seen some. And uh, usually they don't have a skin color because statues don't have skin. In the same way that the statue at the Fountain Plaza there in downtown Montgomery where Rosa Parks stood they have a little statue of Rosa Parks. And it's made of bronze or brass or something. And uh, it's not black. It doesn't look anything like her skin tone because statues tend to be made out of a material and they don't like paint over the statue afterward to make it look like the person's skin tone. So that's one of my big questions is with a lot of these statues, how does he even know that they're white? Like, if it's just a statue of traditional Jesus, like, you know, the Rio Grande statue or something like that, I, I can't tell what Jesus' skin color is supposed to be because it's just a statue made out of a material. Now, in that particular example, it happens to be white and even whiter than I am because it's like some kind of marble or something. But so is his hair and so is his clothes and his hands and everything else. Like, it, it's not meant to depict a skin tone. Just like that bronze statue of Rosa Parks is not supposed to be depicting a certain skin tone. And so this is a really weird case to make, the statues, because very few of the statues that I've seen 
you could even really sort of decipher what the race of the person being depicted even is. You certainly wouldn't be able to tell, for example, that Rosa Parks is black if you didn't know who she was and just looked at that statue that's there in the city. But I don't think that's wrong to do. That's just how statues are. But nonetheless, this is the case that he tries to make. But where I really get tickled is where he's trying to make biblical points and, and trying to delve into the scripture and what they say. He's like, where, where did they go when they wanted to blend in? They went to Egypt. Okay, a couple reasons why that's wrong. First of all, they weren't going there to blend in. That was not the purpose of going there. See, the thing is, Herod was not looking specifically for Mary and Joseph and a baby named Jesus. He was killing people en masse. And so when they fled, where they fled really didn't matter as long as they were not in Judea. Herod's rule killed all male children of the Jews under the age of two. It was indiscriminate. He wasn't specifically looking for Joseph and looking for Mary and looking for baby Jesus. He was just trying to destroy everybody because he didn't know where they were. And so it really didn't matter where they fled to. I don't know exactly what the status of Denmark would have been in the first century, but if they had, had fled to Denmark, even though that would have been a really long ways away, even if they had gone to Denmark and then come back, the result would have been exactly the same. They weren't blending in. They were just going to a jurisdiction outside of Herod's uh, influence and power, and really anywhere would have sufficed. The color of the people that they went to to stay with made absolutely no difference in that scenario whatsoever. So while it's probably true, and I've said this on my program many times, that the depictions of Jesus that are usually given with him as a, uh, a, a white guy with flowing locks of hair and a long beard and, and into this incredibly clean white robe for a dude that spent all his time on the road walking around in desert country, uh, those aren't correct. I'm not claiming that they are. But Sean King's rationale is so bad that you've just got to point it out. The thing is, only an imbecile could claim that the depictions of a Jesus statue are for white supremacy. If there was any, the entirety of Western culture that is built on the idea that all men are created equal, specifically here in America, but even more broadly, that is a biblical Jesus idea. A person that is following the teachings of Christ cannot possibly be a white supremacist. Those are mutually exclusive positions. You either are a white supremacist or you are a follower of Jesus. Now, you could be neither of those things, but you certainly can't be both of those things at once. And so <laughs> the idea that people are erecting giant Jesus statues and that's a form of white supremacy is just laughable. I mean, I'm sure that not every single person that put up a Jesus statue or has a depiction of Jesus is necessarily a good person or necessarily above reproach. I'm not suggesting that at all. But the idea that the world with lots of Jesus statues and when a person is putting up a Jesus statue, they're, they're doing so because of white supremacy is just stupid. Anyway, so here's a, another clip, a follow-up tweet of Sean King trying to make this case again with stainless, uh, sorry, uh, stained glass windows and, and the like that also show this depiction of the quote-unquote European Jesus. And he says there, yes, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friend should also come down. They are a gross form of white supremacy created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda. Man, this guy can't even speak in full sentences. They should all come down. So Sean King there trying to explain. Now, I have to at least say that depictions of murals and stained glass windows, at least you can kind of tell what a person's race is when you do that, because there is some skin tone that goes into that, and at least in some works of art. And so that does make a little more sense than the statues. But nonetheless, when it comes to this, this is so ridiculous. Like I've said, Jesus probably had more of an olive skin tone, probably closer to what we would see as, as modern Arabs, probably a little bit lighter skin, but not by much. Something, you know, kind of a Mediterranean look. But does anybody really believe that the reason that Jesus is often depicted as a white guy is because of some kind of white oppression? 
Or is it more likely that a lot of the art that cropped up that became popular for depicting Jesus happened, you know, Renaissance to pre-Renaissance and mostly took place by and large in Europe? That's the reason. From the art of the Middle Ages and then fast-forwarding into the Renaissance, the classical period, that kind of thing, a lot of those depictions that were popularized and became what most people thought of when they thought of a depiction of Jesus, that came from then. It wasn't like a bunch of Italians got together and was like, hey, you know what we should do? We should paint Jesus as white to keep the black guys down. They were living in Italy in the 1400s. And painters normally, not always, but normally when they are going to paint something, what do they use? Models. So they'll take a person, have him sit there and act as a stand-in for a famous person. They model what that person looks like after the person that they get as the model. Yes, it's a depiction of Jesus Christ, but they were probably modeling that off of people that lived in their village, in their town, friends of theirs, that kind of thing. Well, what were those people going to look like? Well, at that time in Italy, probably not an Arab. Jesus looks Italian because Italians painted him that way, because that was what they were used to. That was the kind of people that they had around. Those were the kinds of things that they used as inspiration. They weren't trying to go out of their way to make him whiter than he actually was. These guys weren't historians. Believe me, I wish that we did a better job of depicting Jesus more closely to historically what he actually looked like. That's something that I've called for in the past. But the idea that not doing so, and the reason that we have the misconception of Jesus as being someone of a lighter skin tone than he probably was, that didn't crop up as a tool of the patriarchy. That was just happenstance. And Sean King trying to attribute this kind of sinister evil motive where none is present is really primarily the result of the fact that he is a dedicated radical Marxist that hates Christianity. They want to secularize the world, and getting rid of all the Jesus statues and murals would be a pretty fast way to at least start along those lines. Because here are, here are statues depicting an actual perfect man that his entire life never advocated any person, regardless of their race, taking advantage of anyone. A guy that actually builds bridges across racial lines, especially when it came to people like the Gentiles and the Samaritans. This is the man whose philosophy influenced the whole of Western culture and the idea that human beings were a single race of individuals created by a loving father and ought to treat one another with dignity and respect. The whole of Western culture is built on that idea, and yeah, we didn't always get it right, and it took us a long time to get to where we are, but Jesus is the origin of all that, and they want to tear his statues down now. Nobody with any sense of rationale left in their body could claim that this is not about just destroying tradi tradition and destroying history at this point if they're wanting to get rid of Jesus. Look, if Sean King finds the white depictions of Jesus, and there are several of them, I'm not pretending that there aren't, but if he finds those so offensive... Maybe he should just do exactly the same thing that he does every single morning when he walks into his bathroom and looks in the mirror. Sees a white person and pretends that they are a black guy. Seems to me that would solve all the problems, that Sean King could just pretend Jesus, even though he's depicted as white, is black, just like he is white and pretends that he's black. And that would solve all the problems. Sean King's happy, everybody else is happy. I don't know. Seems like a good solution to me. But here's the bottom line. And this is more important than anything else that I have said in the Daily Dose of Stupid up till this point. What did Jesus actually look like? I don't care. Not at all. Not one iota. If I saw an actual photograph of Jesus Christ, I wouldn't care what it looked like. The only thing that the Bible deems important enough to include in the Gospels, well, actually not in the Gospels, this is in a different passage of Scripture, but from people that actually knew him. The only thing that the Bible sees important to include in the canon in regards to Jesus' appearance is that he was not somebody that was particularly attractive. That's it. That's all the description that we're given. That's all the description that, we're ne that is needed. Why? Because it teaches a theological truth that the way Jesus looked didn't matter. 
People weren't drawn to him because he looked good. People weren't drawn to him for the same reason that they were, for example, drawn to Saul in the Old Testament because he was very tall and commanding and had that sort of leadership presence and was an attractive individual. That's not why they were drawn to Jesus. They were drawn to him because of who he was. That's the message that everybody is missing here. Can we please just ignore the skin tone? I don't care what Jesus' skin looked like. It is immaterial to me. He could be extremely dark or look like an Asian or a Native American or Mediterranean or a white guy. It doesn't matter. What does matter is who he was and what he did. What does matter is that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, was willing to sacrifice his own life to give you forgiveness of your sins. That's the only thing that counts in this discussion. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.